The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Friday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Non-farm payrolls Friday. We get more than 300,000 jobs added. The market likes the numbers. 3.7% unemployment. We'll get into them in a moment. But you look at the acceleration from yesterday's lows to the spike we got this morning. You're talking about almost 100 S&P points as we did get above 4,000 on the futures just for a moment. You spiked about 30 points on the s and to the upside we came into that report basically flat you see the action overnight you accelerate higher into the close to about 39.70 you talk about a tight trading range about 10 points from where you were at about 6 p.m eastern time last night we open uh, uh excuse me we get the farm payrolls at 8 30 accelerating higher this morning nasdaq about seven tenths percent right now trading at 12,380. hopefully i can keep here Come on, connect with me. Let's go. There we go. NASDAQ 100. Yesterday, we, we were flirting with an 11,000 handle, 12,017 within about 20 points. This morning, we're almost 400 points higher, 12,380 at the NASDAQ 100. Higher by 7 tenths Dow, higher by about 7 tenths percent as well. The Russell positive by 8 tenths percent. We jump to commodities, currencies, Bitcoin, above 20,000, yet again, 20,260. We jump over to crude, catches a little bit of a lift as well this morning. How about crude? The pullback from Tuesday to Thursday, $12 almost, $11.50, a little bit more, $11.60, what, 68 cents. Yeah, crazy action in the cruise mark, crude market. We catch a little bounce. And boy, you want to talk about you know, bounces that are possible, man. Even getting back to the 382 of just the move we had over the last 48 to 72 hours, you're talking about up to 90 bucks. You make it to the 618, that's 9317. And that's only looking at movements that are happening within three to four days. We're sitting at 89.23 in the price of crude. Gold contract, a little bit of a bid this morning from the lows yesterday. 1699 was the low yesterday. We're trading at 1718, up $9 on the session. And we jump to notes and bonds. We're seeing a little bit of higher price and lower yield. Right now, we're looking at a yield of about 3.25%. I mean, all things considered, we did get a spike lower at one point yesterday. But you were basically chopping around right near 116. You see the volatility. Let's put it on a five-minute to see the action since 830. Volatility, both directions. Uh, the market straight shot upward. We actually had the 10-year spike higher in price, spike lower in price. We're now about five ticks higher than where we were trading coming into that 830 number. And let's jump over to the VIX. We've been on an upward trajectory in the VIX. And today we may get our first pullback. Uh, yesterday you did get a pullback, but you opened yesterday at 2688. So yeah, the market charged higher. You did get a pullback. You were just chopping around near the 26 level, though. Today, actually giving back a lot of the gains to 2399 right now on that volatility index. All right, let's jump around to the actual numbers of the jobs. The headline number you're going to see out there, 315,000 jobs. Exceeding estimates. Estimates were pretty close, actually. As you come in here, uh, yeah, the CNBC has just below the estimate of 318, and Bloomberg has exceeding the estimates. Not sure if they even put it in here in terms of the number. Nonetheless, pretty strong number in jobs. Unemployment rises to 3.7%. That a factor of more people joining the workforce. Uh, a broader measure, measure of unemployment, what's it, the U6 rate, I believe that one is, that includes discouraged workers, those holding part-time jobs, actually rising to 7% from 6.7. Wage is rising, but only 0.3% for the month and 5.2% from a year ago, 0.1 percentage points below estimates. I mean, 0.3% for the month is still wages for the last 30 days, rising at an annual rate of 3.6%, right? Multiply it by 12, you get 12 months in a year. If you're rising 0.3% on a monthly basis, wages right now still at a 3.6% clip on an annual basis. 
but that's down from an estimate of 4.8%. Because if you came in at 0.4%, it seems like small numbers, and there's a lot of variance in those numbers, but pay attention to them. On a year ago, 5.2%. Wages not keeping up with inflation, part of the problem in terms of real wages, what's happening. Where the jobs are from, professional and business services led with 68,000, healthcare, 48,000, retail, 44, leisure and hospitality that had been leading the jobs recovery for a while, just 31,000 for the month after averaging 90,000 in the previous seven months. Now, I'm not sure if that's an indication as we can come into September. Maybe seasonality, I'm not sure. The buildup to the summer acceleration of leisure and hospitality. But nonetheless, you still have that going on. People still want to travel, I'm sure. And so you see that actually lagging down from a big number of 90 over the previous seven months. You're sitting at 31,000 for leisure and hospitality. Manufacturing up 22,000. Financial activity 17. Wholesale trade 15. I mean, big gains across the board for numbers in this economy with 315,000 added. Now, where does the conversation shift? The conversation shifts to 75 basis points. And scrolling down the line here, Bloomberg's updating live features here. What is that it probably bolsters the case for 75 basis points? Here we go. Uh, Cross assets reporter, no. For, so head of macro research at Lombard, some asset management. The economy is still doing reasonably well, at least well enough to still be producing inflation. Today's payroll numbers and the ISM figures are both pointing in this direction and give more ground to the Fed. I tend to pretty much agree with that, folks. 315,000 jobs added, wages still going up by 0.3% a month. Very healthy economy, even though the market's a little freaked out about the cost of capital and rates going up that is not the fed's mandate the fed's mandate is full employment we're still at 3.7 percent okay even the u6 rate at seven percent right now historically okay low and you fast forward to the cpi numbers which are 8.5 percent so they got to keep bringing it i would imagine uh cpi we get in 11 days i believe yes we come back, we're coming into a long weekend, close for Monday. Going to be really interesting to see how today goes with three days off, considering the volatile trading week we've had. Remember, last week we were at 4,200 coming into the Fed on Jackson Hole. We trade down 300 points, and since then we've popped now over 4,000 at 4,001. Can we hold on to those gains? I mean, maybe that's just a sigh of relief because one of the things that I was talking about yesterday to think about the possibility of, right, bad news used to be good news for the stock market prices. Bad economic news used to be good news for stock market prices. I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Now, this is good news, which is now maybe good news for the market because before the Fed's path was always determined – right, by maybe the economic data we were getting. So what if the Fed's path, they're pretty confident, is going to be 50 to 75 basis points for the foreseeable future, and they're going to delay cutting over the period of X months? Well, what happens is we know what the Fed's going to do. The market priced that in. Maybe that was part of the acceleration from 4,200 to 3,900. Now, guess what happens? Now, since the Fed is on a path that they're going to wait for multiple data points to be sure that inflation which is sitting at 8.5, is on a path to 3 or 2%. That may be many data points they're going to wait for. But guess what? How's the economy doing? Well, we got some good economic numbers. That's good for the market, and it's not indicative of a Fed, potentially, that's going to ratchet up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures up near 35 points. That's almost 9 tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100, 12,392. That's 8 tenths percent. Dow up 8 tenths percent as well. And the Russell up 9 tenths. All the indices, 8 to 9 tenths right now in the positive. Jumping over the headline from Bloomberg, I agree. Hadn't seen it. All eyes on CPI after jobs data barely moves the Fed needle. I mean, you could say that this was the expectation and they just nailed it. And so we just moved to the next data point to see what happens. And yes, we got wage, wage data, wage data, less than the market was expecting. OK, inflationary tendencies, almost more important right now than how many jobs we're getting. How much are people making? Is there a rise in wages that will correlate into a rise of the price of goods that you're purchasing? And from there, we go to the CPI numbers. So we come back September 6th from the long weekend. A week from then, Tuesday, September 13th, we get the CPI numbers for the month of August. And then we have a Fed meeting one meeting one week after that. And so that's where things go from there. And I was just pausing because the 10-year yields, it is interesting that they don't move at all, right? We see a market acceleration higher and yields stay the same throughout. So it's almost, I believe, a relief rally in terms of the market has priced in its 50 to 75 basis points. Uh, and that's going to be the talk right now. And it's going to be a close one. And the CPI is probably going to be the data point that decides that. So put it on your calendar, man, 11 days from right now to see where that goes. And this chart was just talking about the labor force prime age participation, highest since pre-pandemic. Labor force participa participation rates last month by sex for various age groups on a seasonally adjusted basis. So the prime age is the highest since the pre-pandemic. You can check that out at Bloomberg. Interesting data, they break it down from every single four to five to 10 year to 20 year bracket of ages. All right, let's jump around and see what else we have going on. 
and talking about the pound. So I talked with our man Teddy Kegstad on Wednesday. If you haven't tried out the Tiger Forex report, folks, check it out. Forex so important in this market in terms of how currencies are impacting markets commodity yields etc how yields are impacting currencies and therefore sterling's collapse to 115 shows uk market despair runs deep now it is interesting okay as this market continues to drift higher as we got the s&p up at 4006 right now uh it is interesting if you take a look at for instance we'll start with the euro as we're literally at parity we almost made it to 99 yesterday okay now we jump over to the dollar index the dollar index is backing off a bit. You almost traded to 110. We're back to 109. That would make sense that as we have the dollar weakening a bit, okay, off of the highs, what do we have? We have the dollar weakening a bit. We have the euro strengthening a tad bit. I'm going to sneeze here. Excuse me. Excuse me. And putting this on a longer term basis, okay, there is your euro US dollar. We first got to parity around July 14th, amazing, six weeks ago. Time is just flying, folks. You know, it feels like we started this year off with a huge negative acceleration, and it feels like that really hasn't ever ended, even though we traded from 3,600 and change to 4,300 almost in the S&Ps. Uh, you could call that a relief rally, especially as we just dove down to 3,900 in the time being. But man, it's almost September. And it feels like the year has been an acceleration right from the get-go. Nonetheless, it's already September. We've been trading at parity for the euro for six weeks. But look where we are in the euro, okay, which is basically a parity, where you were July 14th. Look at the trend line that we're in in the euro, okay, chopping around a bit, basically where we've been since August 22nd. And then you compare that to the pound. You've got a lot more weakness in the pound right now, even more, the, more so than the euro. And you are breaking well below right now where you were on that July 13th, July 14th low. On the pound dollar, you were at 118. The article I just pulled up was talking about sterling at 115. You're at 115.65. You were as low as 114.98 on the acceleration yesterday. Uh, where that falls, man, currencies, sterling, signs of anxiety across Britain's financial markets, UK assets less investable is what's going on here. And they're going to have a new prime minister just days away from taking that. You're at 115, and there's the chart I just showed you, man. And it is interesting, when even when you compare it to the euro to illustrate how much trouble the pound is in, okay? They're talking about assets, less investable, fixed income portfolio managers talking about that, uh, impending recession, the weak pound. They have huge inflation over there. You're going to have a hawkish Bank of England. Very negative for the UK, obviously, allocating towards UK assets, very difficult right now. They are in some big woes over there. Europe is as well. Pretty remarkable, though, when you actually think about that the pound is in worse shape than the euro right now. And that's the case, for sure. Staying with currency, currencies, let's jump out. Well, let's jump back to the dollar real quick. Because, yeah, we're seeing a little bit of dollar weakness here. Okay, that's giving a lift to our markets. That's giving a lift to gold. As we're at 1723 right now. All right. This is why, folks, I know I plug it occasionally, but currencies right now, you know, just a very opportune time to walk through what's happening with currencies, seeing how gold's getting a lift in the same way, right? We jump back to the yen. You jump to the yen. What's happening with the yen? The yen's going to be pulling back, I'm sure. There's your pullback, okay, from 140.80 to 140.05. That's quite a little drop off right now on that CPI data. As we're getting a number we spike to 140.08, and just like that, the yen almost gives up a full point. Uh, but remarkable, the high we made, almost 141 there in the end. We were just trading, folks, August 11th at 131, right? Just huge moves across the board. And when you have that type of dollar strength versus the yen, very difficult for gold priced in dollars to rise on any severe level. And that's why we've seen quite a pullback in gold. We've been talking about that. You take a look at gold, you put it on a three-year weekly, okay? Put it even on a five-year weekly to see the full run this thing had from 1167. You chop around for a period of a few months almost. You break out of that in November of 2018. There's your COVID volatility. Not even really too volatile considering uh, many other markets and how it looked on the chart. It was a one-way trip. 
some COVID volatility in March of 2020. You accelerate to 2089. Now, again, you talk about time flying, folks. We're in a two-year consolidation in gold right now. And what did you do? You just came down and touched the 1700 area in gold. 1699.10 is the exact low. We've hit that area once, twice, three times over the last couple of years. Now, yes, you broke below it by $27 occasionally, but when you're talking about a $300 range from $1,700 to about $2,000 on the upside, we're right near that price level right now. And when you look at where we are in currencies, right, risk-reward-wise, do I think the euro is going to gain strength anytime soon? No, I don't. But you got to keep in mind, we just dropped from $122 to parity in the span of just over a year. I mean, the yen's even more crazy. The pound is even more crazy. Maybe you can drop to 95. Maybe you drop to 90, okay? But risk-reward-wise, you are getting to an area, and time is going to fly, folks, okay? It's September of 2022. Even if the Fed's saying we're not going to cut for a period of 12 months, well, 12 months comes and goes, you know? We get three quarters, then we're nine months in. Uh point being at some point these cycles will reset as in the u.s will get to a point that we tame inflation especially with the fed's new stance okay maybe it's been their stance all along but they're reiterating it where the market understands it and when that happens maybe we'll have to cut 12 months down the line and maybe the dollar will lose some strength and maybe currencies will react maybe that will hit commodities we'll come back for the open folks stay tuned Time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, S&P up by 35 points right now. We catch a lift accelerating higher on the non-farm payrolls number, just above 4,000. But as we open, markets giving it back a few points. We'll see where we go throughout the day. We jump to commodities. Gold contract up about ten dollars. We got some currency movement this morning. You have some crude movement as well. We make a low of eighty-five ninety-eight yesterday. We're up to eighty-nine oh six. So jumping over to the crude story, this is an interesting one. Uh, I don't pretend to understand the fundamentals well enough to know how this will work, but I'm not sure you can cap the price of oil if there's huge internet, huge international players like China and India that may not be on board, but you have the G7 backing a price cap plan for Russian oil to limit revenue. But some of the analysts in here and going through this earlier today are talking about, uh, here we go, but it remains unclear how effective a price cap regime would be, particularly since some of Russia's biggest buyers have agreed to join. India, reluctant to formally join a price cap scheme since its industries worry it could lose out to other buyers on the chance to buy discounted Russian crude. Uh, and then you have China in there, of course, as well. But nonetheless, that is impacting the price of crude today to see how that plays out. And all I can say is, man, the war with Russia, it's going to impact crude for years to come, probably, in that and I wonder how that's going to play out in terms of we're going to continue to see that type of volatility. And look at this market. It gives it up pretty quickly to the tune of about 10 points on the open right now. We'll see if we hold on to these gains. Not too surprising with jobs number. In terms of does it change the scenario? I mean, Kevin Hinks had a great comment yesterday saying, what changes the narrative tomorrow? What would change the narrative? Speaking of the jobs number we got today, right? What in that jobs number could change where the Fed is, what their mentality is. And I don't think there was anything possible, really, outside of a huge miss that was not very likely, and we don't get it at all. We get basically what the market was thinking, a few hundred thousand jobs added, 3.7% unemployment, wage growth a little bit tame, and we go to the CPI number, man, and the CPI decides whether we got 50 or 75 basis points. And hopefully the companies can meander this type of an environment because – I don't think the Fed is going to be swayed if they have a tough three, six, nine months down the road because the economy is indicative of a very strong economy right now with the amount of jobs that we're adding. Okay, jumping to yields. Global bonds, talked about this, they were close. Well, they're there now. Global bond index drops 20%. It's in a bear market for the first time uh, in a generation from the January 2021 peak. And this is the Global Aggregate Total Return Index from Bloomberg. Uh, that high made, what did I say, January of 2021, I believe. Yes. The biggest drawdown since its inception in 1990. And, you know, in the conversation I had with Kevin yesterday, I mean, folks, we got, you know, I take that article and we also got this article here with the bonds at the two-year. OK, declines from a 14-year high after the job support comes in ex as expected. It hit 3.55%, folks, the two-year. And the 10-year, after closing at 3.04 last week, was as high as 3.29. So you get the 10-year at 3.25 about right now. You have the two-year, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like sitting about 3.42 right now. And the 10-year has gone to about 3.23. Those are some pretty decent yields right now, man. 3.5% over a 10-year basis. My expectation is the Fed is going to get inflation under control, folks. On a fixed income basis, I mean, those are some pretty spicy returns, especially considering what we're used to for so long. I mean, for the longest time, you know, putting your money, I mean, Larry Pesavento, our man, was saying it all the time, right? Negative makes no sense. We didn't get there. But even our tenure, half a percent, three quarters of a percent, the poor, unfortunate people, folks, uh, that ever decided that things were too bad as, as COVID hit, the market collapsed. They sold out at the market at a loss and went into something like fixed income. I mean, even just, you know, pulling up random bond funds, right? Bond, that's Vanguard's total return bond fund, I think. You go into this thing for, for safety in the year 2020 and the market accelerates higher. And what happens? You go and you go from 88 to 74, man, as you you know, go to fixed income for half a percent. 
at a time a year later, it takes off to 9.5% inflation, and we have yields now that 10-year are 3.5%. Some of these numbers, I mean, you look at some of these charts on some of these bond funds in particular, man. I mean, look at this one. You're way below anything. Bonds have been in a bull forever, and, man, they just whipped back like we haven't even seen. You talk about the 30-year, all right, there's a break for you. All right, the 30-year is sitting at prices right now, and these are futures, okay, but you were at in 2008, and you just accelerated through a trend line you had been in since the year 2000. You break through that, come back and test it, and we're now basically at lows again. It's going to be interesting. This market, not really indicative of a strength on that number, as it's all been negative action on the open so far. We're up 17 points in the S&Ps. The NASDAQ 100, we just gave up a quick 100 points. 12,324, you're up by 33 points right now in the NASDAQ. Let's check some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading. Amazon with a lift this morning, up 1.1%. Microsoft up half a percent, half a percent. Apple, all the FANG stocks pretty high, which is interesting when you look at the, even the NASDAQ 100, it's only up by three tenths percent, and you have the big dogs higher. Google shares, <clears throat> excuse me, up by one tenth percent so far this morning. Netflix opens lower. Let's see how this growth stocks. ARC, a little bit positive. Zoom, flat this morning's. DraftKings, up a little bit. Roku shares, down 1.5%. Some of Kathy Wood, other. Teladoc, up about half a percent so far. Let's see how the banks are trading. Bank of America, up 1.2. There's a lift for you, man. Yeah, J JP Morgan, up a percent right now. Even Wells Fargo. Let's see how the airlines. Delta, up about three tenths percent. American barely in the positive. Let's see how the oil companies are trading right now. Exxon, they're up as oil gets a lift. Exxon up about 2%. Now, look at where Exxon is, right, compared to where the price of oil is. You could say that Exxon, very near the highs of oil. Meanwhile, oil got to 130 bucks at one point. Even Chevron. Now, you want to talk about There's an acceleration of 157, 182. Just crazy moves all year. This thing started at under 120 in the year. Pretty interesting action. We're getting higher price and lower yield in the 10-year right now. That's talking about a yield right now of 3.22% after being at about 3.25% to start things off. Over in Europe, big moves to the upside. DAX up 2.5%. FTSE up 1.5%. CAC rule up 1.3%. Uh, Asia pretty much flat overnight on the action. Yeah, gold continuing to rise. Let's check out how the dollar's moving. We get action everywhere right now, man. Dollar continuing to drop a bit. We're negative 46 pennies at 109.22. Euro sitting right at parity. And the S&P holding on to gains of about 22 points. Not bad when you think about the run we had yesterday. We're still 90, 9 0, more than 2% off of the lows we had less than 24 hours ago at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a quick break. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps continuing to slide a bit right now. You're up by 15 points. The NASDAQ 100, you're only up by 14 points, and that's barely in the red. We might go negative as I speak right now, and that is with Apple up three quarters percent, having a big impact there, right? You got Amazon up half a percent right now. You have Google shares up. Oh, there's Google. All right, they turn a little bit negative. Microsoft, though, in the positive. So you get Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, all in the positive so far. Netflix, not really a, uh, a fang stock to the same degree anymore, but look at that drop, man. Growth stocks, you're about to go negative in the NASDAQ 100. It was only positive by two points there. Netflix down 1.8% right now. Disney down about three quarters percent right now. Jump to uh, some of the other streamers. Warner Brothers down about two tenths. Paramount down 1.1% right now. Excuse me. Yeah, everybody getting quite a pullback on the open. Meta shares, there's a pullback for you from about 168 to 164. Now, Meta, the news, uh, interesting. They're striking a deal with Qualcomm, pulling up this story, to make custom virtual reality chips for Metaverse applications. So Meta and Qualcomm are teaming up to develop custom chipsets, chipsets for virtual reality products. Uh, Meta... Facebook going all in, of course. And so the Quest products are Meta's line for virtual reality headsets. The Meta Quest 2 headset currently uses Qualcomm's Snapdragon XR2 chipset. Uh, and I think I have, what do I have? I have one of them. I have it even down somewhere here. The Oculus, Oculus Quest 2. That is what I have. Uh, the Oculus Quest 2. And it's pretty cool, folks. It is. But like a lot of things, it can take a lot longer than you may imagine to turn that in. I mean, imagine Amazon bought Whole Foods five years ago, right? I thought about that. I said, man, things take a lot longer to transform sometimes. And this might be a 10 to 20 year journey. And Zuckerberg's all in, man. But it could be a 10 to 20 year journey of spending money to make the experience what it needs to be to take over, right? It's, it's kind of that last mile of virtual reality where it's pretty cool right now, but man, once you get into the area where it's completely immersive, it could be life-changing for many, but that is some time to go for sure. And jumping back to the Fed, so traders pairing the Fed hike bets after the jobs, talking about the expectation of where you go. 65 basis points is what it is right now. So 75 as in the expectation is for 65, right? An even split would be 62.5 between 50 and 75. So the odds actually slightly tilted to 75, but slightly less so 
than before the labor market data. So it was a little bit more tilted to that side. Uh, Fred and Fred and Treasuries gained in the wake of the data, pulling down yields a bit. That's where you had the two-year pullback a bit, right? We had the 10-year pulling back a bit as well as it was at 3.25. But as our man Basil Chapman says, folks, the day is very young. And taking a look at yields, there's your pop. Uh, but we're almost right where we were within the 9 o'clock bar in yields. When we were sitting at 116.13, we're at 116.14 right now. You actually spiked to that level right on that jobs number to 116.14, where we're sitting at at 8.30. So you're just kind of back to that first spike that we were in to start things off. All right, jumping around to some of the other companies that are moving this morning, we jump over to Lululemon. You talk about some action, man. Out with their numbers last night, strong numbers. They deliver. They're up another 10% today. Now, you're only back to where we were at the middle of the month, but that's before the market sold off from 4,200 to almost 3,900 on the S&Ps. We've bounced a bit, but you've claimed all that back to 324, still well off the highs for Lululemon from 45. You put this thing even further back on a five-year weekly, you see where this thing has come from, man. And where do you pull back to, folks? Right to the 618 of the entire move higher from COVID from a low of about one, what, one third, what's our low there, 128? To 485, we back all the way down to that 618 line at about 265. We chop around there for a couple months. And since then, we've got a nice bid, 324 on Lulu's strong numbers out there. Yeah, and what else do we have? Uh, Marathon Oil is higher. Oil company is going to be higher, of course, with the price of crude rising a bit. And on the flip side of that, some of the China stocks, JD, I know they were lower, jumping around. Yeah, down by 3.7%, 3.1% JD, and even what, Dish was lower as well. Yeah, look at that drop off, off 3.7% moving lower. Well, the market seemed to look to have stabilized a bit. We're still up by 20 points. We were up by almost 40 points coming into the open, still above where we came into that jobs number. Pretty interesting to see what happens today as all eyes point towards the CPI number, folks. 50 or 75 basis points. Uh and we go from there. So it's going to be an interesting week next week when we come back. We'll come back on Tuesday and we'll have a week of trading leading into the CPI. And then we have one week after that, the Fed meeting in September. And we'll see where we go. Let's see what else I had pulled up here in terms of action going on. Talked about oil. Well, this one's an interesting one in terms of how much money was out there as we had the pandemic. Only fans, uh, their owner, $500 million in dividends. Not bad, man. Now, this site, if you're not familiar, it's a social media site. People who are creators or have their followings of their own, they create an OnlyFans site. You can pay for a subscription. Uh, most of the graphics on there are pornographic uh, in some degree, right? Some not, some whatever it is. Well, last year, Pre-tax profit, $433 million in the year end. Uh, $284 million in dividends for the period, and an additional $233 million in 2022 through the end of August. Not a bad business, man. This thing exploded during the pandemic, only founded in 2016. They offer a portal for people to sell subscriptions for content, uh, and they take 20% of the cut. The content creators get 80%. Uh, revenue, $932 million from 358 a year earlier. They were thinking about going public at one point, and they were going to get some private equity money, and they were thinking about swearing off pornographic material. Uh, there was a revolt. They reversed that within about a week, man, and I imagine so. Why do you need to go public if you're raking in $500 million in profits? That's not what the company's worth. That's straight out profits that are already taken out of the company, right? You could go and sell that company. Uh, the dividends are out. He's already made half a billion dollars, uh, this gentleman. Not bad. Some remarkable money out on the internet, man. All right, what do we got pulled up here? We talked about the jobs, bonds, yields. Let's take a look at some of the currencies and see how they're moving again, as currencies are always jumping around right now. We jump to that DXY. And we're sitting right at about 109.24. URL still sitting at about parity right now. And we'll jump to the yen real quick. US dollar yen. Yeah, sitting above 140, backing off the highs. And, you know, maybe we just take this number in stride. The market's already sold off 300 points from where it was before Jackson Hole. We've now gotten a little bit of a lift as we've gotten past one of the big data points that we needed, which was non-farm payrolls, okay? I mean, the last thing 
that the Fed wanted to see was hot wage data or something like that. Maybe they, you know, you wouldn't want to see if you're the Fed, five or six hundred thousand jobs added and huge wage growth. That would mean that they have more work to do in dramatic fashion. So we get over that hump. The market gets a little bit of a relief. We rise from 3,900 to 4,000. Now what happens as we come into the CPI data and a long weekend? We'll find out. We got one more segment. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Inn. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 21 points right now, sitting at about 39.90. We get the NASDAQ 100. You almost got into the red, but it saved itself. We're up by 50 points. That's four tenths percent. The Dow up about half a percent right now, 31,811. The Russell hanging on by a few points as well. Bitcoin up about $550 at 20,250. Crude up two dollars, pulling back a bit from the spike we just got. Though we're as high as 89.60, we give up about a dollar since I've been on the air at those highs. We're at 88.57 right now. The price of crude and gold up about twelve dollars as we have some currency action as well. And, and check out the moves in yields, man. We got a rise, higher price, lower yield. The ten-year 3.2 percent from about 3.25 percent. Interesting. Uh, a little bit lower yield. 
following that jobs number, higher market, lower yields. Pretty interesting how things are trading in tandem here, as in, you know, where do you hide the price of markets, indices trading lower, the price of fixed income trading lower together, and what do we get this morning? We get higher price in the markets with a lower yield number. Not too surprising. We'll see as the trend continues. We jump over to the VIX this morning, volatility index sitting at about 24. And you're talking about lows that we have not seen this week yet. So something to pay attention to as maybe we sail into Friday of a long, long weekend. And folks, if you're out there this weekend, if you're out in a car, if you're out in a boat, no drunk driving, prepare for it. You know if you're going to a scenario where you're going to have a couple drinks, make a plan for it. You can always leave your car. You can always take a couple, uh, an Uber. Get it in the morning. Life is too great to blow it on one night for a few cocktails, especially on a holiday weekend, and especially out on boating. Be safe out there as well. Sometimes that's even more dangerous sometimes. So we can all see you back here on Tuesday. But before then, we got a full day of trading, man. We got six hours and three minutes left of trading. We got live programming today. We got an S&P up by 20. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by 51. The Dow up by 143. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. And stay tuned. Basil Chapman up next. <laughs>